Chapter 21, Sizzling Bottom. It was as if there had been an earthquake, but at least Zoe's arms and legs were now free. Somewhere in the dust cloud, in her now shared bedroom, she could hear Tina and her stepmother coughing. Zoe knew she now had a split second to make her escape and rushed forward. Unable to see anything, she used her hands to desperately find a door handle. Zoe opened the door and hurled herself into the corridor. Completely disorientated by the explosion of dust, it was only now she realised she was running through Tina's flat. It was even grottier than Zoe's. There was no furniture or carpet to speak of. The wallpaper was peeling off the walls and there was a smell of damp everywhere. It was as if they were living like squatters in their own flat. However, this was no time for a makeover, even a 15 minute one like on TV. And after a few moments, Zoe found the front door, her little heart beating faster than ever before. She tried desperately to unlock it. Her hands were trembling and she was unable to turn the bolt. Then, out of the dust cloud behind her, stumbled two monstrous, ghostly figures, huge and looming, all white but with open screaming mouths and eyes bulging out red in fury. It was like something out of a horror film. Ah! Screamed Zoe. Then she realised it was Tina and her stepmother, both covered head to toe in white dust. Ah! Screamed Zoe. Come here! Shouted Sheila. I'm gonna get you! Bellowed Tina. Zoe's hands shook even more, but she just managed to open the door in time. As Zoe slid out, four chubby hands caked in white dust grabbed at her clothes, ripping strips off her blazer. Somehow Zoe managed to slip away and slam the door behind her. Running down the communal corridor, Zoe realised that both ways out of the great leaning tower block, the stairs and the lift were sure to result in capture. Then Zoe remembered there was scaffolding on the far side of the flats. Thinking there might be a way down somehow, she raced over. She opened a window and climbed out onto the scaffold before closing the window be behind her. A wicked wind shook the thin boards beneath her feet. She looked down, 37 floors. Even the buses on the street looked tiny, like little toys. Zoe's head spun. This was beginning to seem like a terrible idea. But behind her, Tina and Sheila's furious faces were pressed up against the glass and they were banging on the window. Without thinking, Zoe ran along the outside of the building as her stepmother and Tina fought to be first out onto the scaffold to give chase. At the end of the wooden walkway, there was a large plastic tube that went all the way down 37 floors to a skip. Zoe had thought it looked like a water slide, though it was designed to pass all the unwanted bits of debris from the building repairs down to the ground safely. It was just big enough for a little girl. Turning round, Zoe saw Tina and her stepmother a few paces behind her. She took a deep breath and leapt into the tube. Red plastic surrounded her and she slid faster than she could have imagined, screaming as she went. Down, down, down. Would it never come to an end? Down and down she swirled, travelling faster and faster as she neared the ground. The little girl had never been on a water slide and for a moment the sensation of travelling so fast on her bottom was fun. As there was no water though, her bottom became hotter and hotter as it rubbed against the plastic. Then, without warning, the ride finished and the little girl flew out of the tube into the skip. Fortunately, there was an old mattress someone had illegally dumped in there and it cushioned her fall. Her sizzling bottom now cooling, Zoe looked up at the scaffold. She could see her oversized stepmother stuck in the mouth of the tube with Tina vigorously trying to push her down by putting all her weight on the woman's huge bum. Push and push as much as she might, Sheila's body just wouldn't fit. Zoe couldn't help but smile. She was safe, for the moment at least. But she knew someone she loved was in the most terrible danger. If she didn't find Armitage fast, he would be pulverised.